This is the story of a man who imposed the reign of terror in Equatorial Guinea on his death in 1979. A leader who chose his selfishness over his people's peace, security and the country's development. This is the story of Francisco Macias in Guema. Dictatorship is a sad section in Africa's history. When speaking on this narrative, we cannot forget Idi Amin of Uganda, Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, Jean Bedel Bukasa of Central Republic of Africa and others. But one leader who was not just a dictator but also tyrannical is Macias Nguema, who was presumed to be the worst Africa has ever encountered. His story shows what 11 years of incompetent and brutal action can do to a country. Less educated and less experienced than his opponent, Macias managed to run a magnificent campaign. With the support of the Spanish lawyer Gracia Trevijano, who financed his campaign and wrote his speeches, he convinced the population that he was the true nationalist. On 12 October 1968, Equatorial Guinea gained independence from Spain and elected Francisco Macias as a president without being aware of the tragedy that was yet to befall them. At first, the colonial Spanish government was reluctant to legitimize him as their leader, but was forced to do so through pressure from the locals and numbers on the voting scale. A few years later, Macias declared himself president for life, cancelling all colonial times and restricting all type of social and political relationship with Spain. He also put on more outrageous titles like the Immaculate Apostle of Steel and the Unique Miracle of Equatorial Guinea. Apparently, the significant thing in Francisco leadership was his hate for foreigners both regionally and internationally. This hatred was visible in his ill treatment toward the Europeans prompting them to leave Equatorial Guinea. As they left, he seized their property, converting plantations into state-run farms and shutting down almost the entire religious sector by ordering the establishment of a system of state-run stores. In this process, 15,000 local retail workers were thrown out of work. In 1970-1971, Nigerian plantation workers who came to Guinea on contract were under attack as over 100 were killed. 20,000 deserted complaining that they had been held in virtual slavery by Masia's plantation managers. Masia replaced the Nigerians with an estimated 45,000 forced laborers shipped over from Riomuni. Managed by inexperienced state officials and staffed with unwilling and often unfed laborers, the output of Guinea's once profitable cocoa and coffee plantation declined rapidly, depriving the country of the bulk of its export earnings. You see, at this point, the economic decision were having terrible impact. He was so cruel that he engaged in constraint violation of human rights. There was no freedom of the press. His obsession to control, manipulate, and censor all articles published in his country blocked the sources for information. And as foreign journalists were not able into the country, the only information of Equatorial Guinea came from Spanish sources. He tried reshaping the religious practices of the former Spanish Catholic colony by urging his photograph to hang beside church affairs and the clergy to preach in their sermons God created Equatorial Guinea thanks to Papa Macias, including a reminder that without Macias, Equatorial Guinea would not exist. In 1973, all priests and missionaries, Catholics or Protestants, were arrested and their movements restricted. His argument was focused on the priests supporting the revolt of the colonial powers against him during the election. In the end, he banned all religious meetings, including funerals, as well as the use of Christian names. You see, he was against any form of westernization that later played a toll on the country. If only he understood the quote of John Donne, no man is an island entire of itself, every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. He would have had a different mindset. But who are we kidding? Masias cared less about all that. He had a wrong motive. He closed libraries and prohibited the use of the word intellectual, even finding his education minister who used it at a cabinet meeting. Macias was a sadistic dictator who routinely killed his opponents, both real and imagined. He routinely ordered thousands of extrajudicial executions and reportedly had some of his victims crucified and their bodies left on display to discourage other potential rivals. During his reign, more than half of the population fled to exile. His rule was so brutal that an observer referred to it as a regime full of tropical gangsters. 
You see, Messiah's economic policy was highly erratic. He has taken steps to dismantle the economic structure inherited from colonialism. Also, the actions of Masias to her former colony had a negative impact on Spanish state investment, and in 1978, the economic relationship largely came to a standstill. He was indeed a disaster for the economy and the people who depended on it for subsistence. He combined economic ignorance with sociopathic rule, leaving the population traumatized and poor. His lack of enthusiastic approach to finding alternatives finally led to the demise in the economy. The country's central bank was closed. State treasury was placed at his disposal in cash for his personal use. When the governor of the former central bank tried to stop him, Macias executed him. Before the discovery of oil, Equatorial Guinea exported cocoa, timber, palm products, and coffee to Europe. Between 1967 to 1979, its economy shrank. Exports of coffee and timber products ended, and lumber dropped from 360,000 cubic meters in 1968 to 6,000 cubic meters in the late 1970s. Prices for imports skyrocketed, stocks of imported food dwindled, imports of machinery and spare parts ceased, with the result that machinery needed to support the plantation economy could not be maintained. Within few years, the, the country's electrical system collapsed and the regimented road system crumbled. Eventually, Macias Nguame's excesses became intolerable. With the support of the Spanish government, the Guinean minister attempted a coup d'etat against Macias on the 5th of March 1969. With all this happening, Macias felt less safe and decided to control Guinea from his village by moving back to Rio Muni. Macias continued to carry out inhuman acts. One that cannot be forgotten is the event of 1975. On Christmas Day in 1975, he lined up 150 of his political opponents in a soccer stadium and shot them dead when a Mukara brass band played. Those were the days, my friend. Crescent executions took place in the notorious Black Beach prison named Player Negro. When it became too expensive to use bullets, victims were forced to kneel and have their skulls smashed with iron bars. Some scholars often referred to him as the mad dictator. By the late 1970s, there was nothing else to exploit or plunder. Some delegation of officers went to beg Macias for money, including his nephew, Chede Opium. With anger, Macias ordered them to be put in a firing squad and asked for the arrest of others. This move led Chede to believe Francisco Macias cared less about family and decided to launch a coup against him. Although Macias fought back, but on August 3, 1979, Theodore Opiang Nguema successfully took over. He was charged for treason and executed on September 1979. His death was one rejoiced over Equatorial Guinea. Sadly, the dream of independence and modernization cherished by many Equatorial Guineans under the despotic colonial rule was crushed during independence. In a country of over 250,000, 5,000 had dispersed, the population density reduced. One would think that the government after Francisco Macias would be different, but the ruin continues. The leadership of Theodore Obiang is another narrative that might be investigated later in another segment. Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Would Equatorial Guinea be different if Macias did not start off on the wrong path? Please do well to like, share, subscribe and turn on your post notification for more videos like this. I am Beloved Williams and this video was produced by The Favoured Media. This is Africa's Safari.